First question came from my guy Nazarene. He said, hey, what's good, bro? As a critic of your takes. Okay, I like that. Uh, and your fellow Ravens fan. Now, I'm just showing love and I appreciate you for your consistency. Uh, it's the boring off season and you make it fun no matter what. <laughs> Hey man, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Man. Uh, so look, I have a solution. Me and some other Ravens fans were beefing. Oh, what's new? Uh, about my take on Anquan Bolden because I said he was a number two receiver when we got him. Now, um, before we go further, technically you're right, but he was a number two receiver. Only because the Cardinals also had Larry Fitzgerald. But it's all about the situation. The situation with him and the Ravens, he was the number one. He gave them exactly what they needed as the top target for Joe Flacco. He became the number one at the Ravens. But with the Cardinals, he was the number two. So... Two things can be right, even though I, you know when people say that, that's so annoying. Like, oh well, two things can be anyway. Um, and the conversation started off rocky, but at the end, a lot of knowledge was shared. Someone pointed out how Baltimore's version of Anquan wasn't the same as Arizona or even San Fran's Anquan, and that he wasn't all that with us. Mm. I I disagree to an extent because with the Ravens, Anquan Bolden. He, he wasn't going to get the same numbers that he was going, getting with the Cardinals, but he was perfect for what the Ravens did. He was perfect for what the Ravens needed. They needed that reliable go-to on third down, the reliable guy who, not the tallest in the world, but Joe Flacco could throw the ball up, and he would go get it. He would go get it. Um, and they were like... <laughs> Hey, y'all know Flacco's my guy, man. But there'll be some times when Flacco would just be like, man, whoosh, and just launch it up, whether it be the Tory Smith, hoping to get that pass interference. Like, oh, man, they, they perfected that, man. They perfected that. We got to get Lamar and Hollywood to get on that, man. But, you know, Ravens, they don't really get no pass interference calls anyway. But, man, and, and then with, with Bolden, there'll be times with, uh, with Bolden. Bolden will save a lot of them. Anyway, let's keep it moving. Um, he said, someone pointed out how Baltimore's version of Anquan wasn't the same as Arizona or even San Fran's Anquan and that he wasn't all that with us. They used stats and stuff to make the point, and I agreed after seeing the stats. My whole point was that the Ravens don't need a proven number one receiver, but an emerging number one who is a number two with another team. Landry isn't a number one in my eyes, but you plug him in with Hollywood, Bateman, and the rest of the gang, we would have an Anquan Bolden type of presence again, and I think he's cheap to be honest. Landry would be straight. Um, I don't feel like he's an emerging number one. Uh, he he would be straight. Um, yeah, he'd be straight. I would just look for somebody a bit more explosive. I wouldn't be mad if they got Landry, um, but I, I would just rather somebody with more e explosiveness. But anyway, um, he said, uh, yeah, Landry isn't a number one, but if you plug him in with Hollywood, Bateman, and the rest of the gang, we would have an Anquan Bolden type of presence again, and I think he's cheap. What do you think? I would even look at Julio. No, he's not a number two. I know because Watkins did, did some good damage with us this past season, even though he was kind of injured the whole season. Ooh, yikes. Uh, Julio won't get that crazy money anymore, so I think we sign him or Landry or Odell. The money that we was going to give Bobby Wagner is definitely enough to get what you and other Ravens fans want. That's my solution. By the way, I think Bateman is elite. He's a chain mover. He does elite things 90% of the time. He was given a chance. Peace and blessings. Woo. It's a loaded one right here to start us off, but the perfect wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, it sounds like that's what you're trying to describe um, and hoping that they get. Now, Julio, the Ravens signing Julio would be a very Ravens move, but it seems like Eric DaCosta is, has been slowly trying to get away from that. Um, signing the older washed up receivers, it seems that maybe, even though he did sign this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Um, but and as far as Sammy, Sammy wasn't I mean, he wasn't older. It seemed like he was older. Like a lot of us last year when we found out that he was twenty seven, I was like, What? Sammy Watkins, twenty seven? Um, but Julio Jones, um again, I, I said this before, I wouldn't mind Julio Jones, but only if he could be like their third or fourth option. 
I, I would if they got a Julio Jones, I would want them to trade for an up and coming guy like you said, uh, or they draft a guy early. Uh, they draft the receiver early, second round at the latest, at the absolute latest, first or second round. It cannot be any later because if they don't draft them in the first or second round, the investment won't be there. They won't care about them. They won't work with them. They won't put them on the field that much. They'll just be doing special t- Again, recent third and after guys, Devin DuVernay, Miles Boykin, James Prochet, Tylen Wallace. And Tylen Wallace, this, his situation was a little tougher than the rest of them. But look at the rest of them. So I just, um, again, Landry will be straight. Um, but I, I just wouldn't want that to be it. I wouldn't want that to be it. I would want them uh, to do more. Speaking of receivers, next question came from my guy Cody. He said, Engraving with Sammy Watkins signing with the Packers, does that make it more likely that we take a receiver in the first round? No, it doesn't. I don't think Sammy Watkins, him signing with the Packers, has. I think it has zero impact on the Ravens whatsoever. We knew that Sammy Watkins wasn't coming back. All indications were that Sammy Watkins wasn't coming back. So nothing that happened with him has any impact on the Ravens whatsoever. I know a lot of people, they've been saying, oh, man, it's Bateman's time now. And then somebody responded to that. They were like, uh, no, it's actually Patrick Ricard's time at Wireless. <laughs> anyway, man, uh, Sammy being a Green Bay Packer. Has no bearing on the Ravens whatsoever. Um, He said, I feel like we have way more prominent needs and free agency would suffice, but I wouldn't be exactly opposed to us drafting an exciting new receiver. And as always, I hope you're doing well. Hey, I appreciate you, Cody. I wouldn't be opposed to it either. Um, But I I don't think Sammy Watkins, I don't think he changes anything as far as free agency or the draft whatsoever. Next question came from my guy Martin. He said, if you could trade two firsts, a second, and a third for any one player in the league except quarterback, who would it be from? I would choose Nick Bosa or A.J. Brown. Two firsts and a second and a third? Boy, this, this, who, if you trade in that for somebody, boy, they, they better be on point. They, they better be right. They better be a game changer. Give me DeAndre Hopkins. Next question came from my guy Phil. He said, I understand a lot of fans want to see a trade for a wide receiver like Scary Terry, Debo Samuel, DK Metcalf, which Lamar recruited on social media, and I would love to see it happen also. But my main question is, does everyone understand, and I know all three only have one year left on their rookie contracts, uh, well, once 2023 free agency comes around, the contracts of Lamar. Andrews and either one of those receivers will cost around a combined 80 to 85 mil, which means the front office will probably have to give up Brown's uh, 15 mil fifth year option. I know the cap is supposed to rise around 20 mil next season, but you can't afford to pay 100 mil between four players and then try to fit 49 other roster players within 130 mil. What are your thoughts on it if you get my point? So you are saying that fans that we want a wide receiver and a wide receiver that's going into the last year or the last years of his rookie contract. So you are saying that he will have to be paid. My thoughts on that, Ravens do it on defense. They could do it on offense now. They, they can shift. It will be a philosophy shift because Ravens, they will be quick to give out the bread on defense. They'll be quick to spend it on defense. Why not take that same philosophy but just switch it to the side of the ball that scores. It makes sense to me, and I think it makes sense to a lot of other people too. Now, but and that's the thing. I know a lot of Ravens fans. They 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 think that way. Like, oh nope, it's not worth it. Ravens shouldn't do it. These guys got contracts coming up. You got to pay people. You got to pay them. Like you mentioned, you got to pay Lamar. Hollywood's up. Andrews still getting paid. And with a lot of these receivers, you would have to end up paying whoever you traded for it too. They wouldn't necessarily have to pay them. I mean, we would want them. I would want them to pay them, especially if they came on and they look good. But see, this is why you have that trial period. Yeah, you give up whatever assets for so whatever receiver. Uh, and depending on who it is, you may have to give up a little more. Sometimes you may have to give up a little bit less. Uh, but you give them that trial period. Hey, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, hey, you tried. But hopefully it will work. So hopefully you could be in a situation where it's like, man. We got to pay this guy because he helped us out so much. We still got to keep Hollywood because he helps us out so much. We obviously got to keep Lamar because he is everything. Um, And then Mark Andrews, he already got his bread. So I don't have a problem 
that it could be a potential problem with having receivers that you have to pay because if you feel like you have to pay them then that means that you played them and they did well for you oh, you know what we didn't even do the intro yeah this feels like a dream and you know just what i mean you see my boy he like got to made it how to made it boy he's a fan and he like the ravens like the ravens and you know just what i mean Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be a part of it, uh, for the patrons, you can send your question directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids, and if you don't want to, then you can just send your question on teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all so much. I thank you so much. For supporting I thank you for all the positive messages I thank you for all the great fun questions Like always Thank you for always bringing a different perspective uh, Even if, if you agree with stuff that I say If you don't agree with stuff that I say It's fine But I always appreciate you all's different perspectives On whatever it is that we're talking about Thank you for shedding a different light on different subjects Thank you for providing a different point of view Thank you for coming with this like outlandish stuff that nobody was even thinking about Because we appreciate it I appreciate it I, I love when y'all bring stuff that nobody was thinking about And y'all present it because that makes it so much fun We got some great questions We got some crazy questions We got some fun questions Let's get to them. Next question came from Z. He said, what's up, Engraven? I hope everything is going well with you and the fam. I had a quick question. How would you feel if the Ravens got a little creative and ran a 4-3 defense and make a few trades? Here are a few examples. Ravens trade the round 300 pick and round 696 pick. I can't even talk. Uh, for Chargers, Jerry Tillery or Eagles, Josh Sweat. Oh, example. Uh, left end would be Adafi away. Defensive tackle, Michael Pierce. Defensive tackle, Calais Campbell. And their right end, Jerry or Josh. Or... Somebody who they could end up drafting, too. That's another possibility. Um, I think they will do a bit of that. I think they will. Um, shout out to my guy, JT, because he pointed, uh, he pointed me to an article about Michael Pierce and the fact that um, with him being released, uh, he said that when he did get released, he wanted to play for a team that would uh, run the 4-3 a bit more. That's more his style. And then, where did he end up signing? With the Ravens. So, will that be a tell of what they're going to run soon? We'll see. Next question came from my boy Antoine. He said, hope you and yours are well. Is it me or does the media seem to want the Ravens to trade big trust Lamar Jackson? The guy they say is not a quarterback and he can't throw. Am I the only one to catch it? Now, uh, no, you're not. Definitely not. I think with the media, they just they want something because Lamar's not giving them anything. And when you don't have an agent, they will try to spin whatever narrative on you because they don't have one. They don't have any leaks. They don't have any sources. They don't have anything. So it drives them crazy. So that's why you hear all this crazy stuff that comes from this person, that person, that person. And I love how Rich Eisen put it in the interview that he did with Harbaugh when he talked about Lamar Jackson. He said it's, it's not a you thing in regards to Lamar Jackson. He said it's a me thing and me regarding the media because the me there's never been anything like this that's happened before. So since this is new territory for them, they don't know how to act with it. That's why everybody's been going crazy. Next question came from Drum Drum. Bum, bum, bum. He said, I have loved all the content you've been putting out since I found your channel after week 18. Oh, yeah, week 18. I'm still getting used to hearing that because it's so weird because we was 17 weeks for so long. But I appreciate you. Uh, so shout out to the NFL for providing that extra week because that put Drum Drum onto the channel. So thank you, NFL. Anyway, he said, I, I love coming home, playing Madden, and listening to your videos. Yeah, some of them be a, a, even longer than a Madden game. And you can put it on 15-minute quarters and you still be on the same video. Anyway, uh, this is my first question submission, and I hope it makes a video. If the Ravens were to trade for DK Metcalf and Huntley was included in the trade, what would the Ravens do for backup after John Harbaugh's comments about not drafting a quarterback? Would they sign an undrafted quarterback or pick up some random quarterback in free agency or go back on his word? I know this question relies on the DK trade actually happening, but I would like to get your thoughts. Um, that would be interesting if they did that. I think that that could, uh, if they traded um, Tyler Huntley, that could obviously change uh, some of their plans as far as drafting a the quarterback. They could take one 
late, like, fifth, sixth, seventh round, something like that. Um, and I, I don't even think they have a seventh round pick right now, but they could. They could obviously trade back, get some more picks, and da 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 um, They could sign. There's always Kenji Bahar because, uh, you know, he, he's all reliable. Um, Trace McSorley, I'm not sure what his status is. Oh, he's still on his rookie deal, though, so never mind. No Trace. Because um, he got drafted in, I think, 2019. Uh, but they, I mean, they, they would have options. They, again, you can sign an undrafted guy. There's that option too. Tyler Huntley was undrafted. Um, you could, you could sign a, a Cam Newton. Uh, cause I know, and, and I think with Cam Newton, um, oh, I'm over here kicking my mic. That was an accident. I guess my mic wasn't feeling that idea too much. Um, you would have options. I'm trying to think who else is out there as a backup. Um, I can't think of nobody else off the top of my head, but it, I don't think it would be like this crazy thing where Ravens are like tripping out anything to get a backup quarterback. They'd be able to find somebody, but I'm sure it would be somebody that can move. It ain't gonna be no statue quarterback. It's gonna be had to be somebody that can move a little bit. They could they could use their arm, but they could also use them legs too. Um, just to be the backup for Lamar just in case. Next question came from my guy Matthew. He said, hey, how's it going? Hope all is well with you and your family. Sorry if this message is a little long. Uh, I can't help but notice J.C. Treader, unless I'm mistaken, is still available in free agency. He is, and I don't think the Ravens are going to sign him. But let's keep going. He said, I think he'll stay a free agent until after the draft for teams to see what they can get, which works out for the Ravens because I believe we could possibly be in another Villanueva situation Hopefully, you're talking about just being able to sign somebody after the draft and not the quality of their play. Anyway, um, and <laughs> with the AFC North rival, wants to get their, their get back at their team, and if the market says Lamar doesn't attract wide receivers, which, to be honest, makes very little sense, like one-on-ones galore due to needing full 11-11 on football to account for Lamar. But anyway... Uh, he definitely attracts linemen. I feel like this could be a possibility at center and really see Patrick McCarry is paid extra. The same reason Pat Ricard was signed uh, extra because they love extra blockers and he might be the contingency plan for Ronnie if he's not ready. Um, that's a uh, that's a good point, too. Um, that's a really good point. Patrick McCarry could be just that, too. Um, I do believe he'll be the Ravens starting center. Um, but the way Eric DeCosta was talking... Um, he made it sound like he gonna draft uh, Tyler Lindenbaum because he was like, um, yeah, there's some centers that we really like in the the, the later rounds. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, okay, I don't believe you. We'll see though. Uh, but Patrick McCarry, he he could be that that just that ultimate backup plan, that ultimate option. Now, hopefully, Ronnie Stanley comes back healthy. But again, stay ready, so you ain't gotta get ready. Um, maybe they try Patrick McCarry at left tackle. Uh, Morgan Moses, you got Jawan James. Hopefully you'll have Ronnie Stanley, but yeah, well, let, let's just keep going though first. Um, he said, I think J.C. Treader might be one of those where uh, we want you, but we want our comp picks first type guys. Nah, Ravens ain't getting no comp picks this year. Comp picks is out the window this year. They are getting zero. You see all these Ravens signing all these one-year deals, these one-year cheap deals? Ravens ain't getting no comp picks with nobody this year. Um, but he said, if we do get him, I hope the comparison ends at the signing because we all know Villanueva still was playing for the Steelers and all those first down and momentum builders he stopped, let alone leaving Lamar out to the Wolves. Let me know your thoughts and keep up the great work and go Ravens. Appreciate you, Matthew. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't think they're going to sign J.C. Treader. I wouldn't be mad if they did. I wouldn't be mad at all. Um, but I just I don't think it's going to go down. Next question came from my guy, Jake. He said, hope you and the family are doing well. Also, hope the viewers are well. Hey. Appreciate that. Uh, I've been saying, uh, excuse me, I've been having this huge obsession of trading up this year. This is based on the fact that the Ravens have so many picks. I want the Ravens to get into the top six. Ooh, and get uh, Thibodeau. He idolized Ray Lewis and said, I'd love to be a Raven. Um, I know this isn't Ravens like at all. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, but I want them to make a big move, making a statement and showing the Ravens aren't messing around anymore. What do you think? Mm. Oh, yeah, that is not a Ravens move at all, but it would be moving up for a defensive player. So that would be a Ravens move. It would give somebody uh, opposite Adafi away, um, a, a game changer on defense. Uh, and as long as they got that interior right, uh, and maybe this could be Matt Abike's year where he steps up, Michael Pierce, uh, Calais Campbell. So you got some solid guys in the middle. You're just waiting for that guy or the guy who's really going to get after it and provide that interior pressure. And like I said, maybe this is Matt Abike's year where, because, you know, Calais Campbell, he ain't going to be out on the field 24-7. Uh, Matt Abike going to have his opportunities, but 
how are they going to do that rotation? Are they going to really let guys get into a rhythm? Are they going to be doing flip-flop and rotation just to try to keep guys extra fresh? I just wonder how that's going to go. Um, but I, I wouldn't be mad if they did this. Uh, now, to move from 14 to 6, that's eight spots. That's, oh, yeah, I had to make sure my math was right. That's eight spots up in the first round. Um, that's, a, that's a lot. Uh, now, if if all it took was a couple of them fourth round picks or something, okay, cool, whatever. But that could take a lot. <laughs> that, could, that could take a lot, man. Um, Cause you ain't moving one spot, you moving eight spots into ooh. Oh, and you said into the top six. You didn't even say it six. You said the top six. So that's one through six. So ooh, they, yeah, that, that could take even more. Um, now, as far as him saying he idolized Ray Lewis and he loved to be a Raven, he would love to go anywhere. Really, you know, like this, he would just love to get drafted. He's gonna love wherever he goes. Uh, of course, you probably got some preferences and whatnot. But I did see that interview that he did where he was sitting at the table and talking about the. I think wasn't Ray Lewis there? I think Ray Lewis was there. But um, so I mean, I, I don't really, really not that I don't buy into all that, but I don't really get all super hyped off of that. Like it's like I remember Michael Crabtree when the Ravens signed Michael Crabtree uh, back in two thousand eighteen. And he was like, oh, man, I, I, it, was all, it was always my dream to play for the Ravens. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, all right. Um, and and when, when, when people say stuff like that, it's cool, but I don't really think it means much. I remember, um, was it last year or the year before last? There was some pass rusher. I forgot who he was. And he was, he was working out, and he had on, like, a Ravens shirt. And everybody's like, oh, oh, we might draft them. We're going to draft them. Oh, it's, it's destiny. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. It, it doesn't mean much to, to me, at least. But um, if they got him, that'd be cool, though. That'd be cool. Uh, will he be drafted that high? Um, ooh, we're going to see. Draft only a couple weeks away. Um, but, oh, speaking of away, away. Because, again, this would impact away. Um, all of our edge guys, all of our edge pass rushers guys, um, they're all coming off an injury, some more significant than others. They're either coming off an injury or they're gone. Uh, Adafi Away coming off an injury. Um, Pernell McPhee gone. Justin Houston gone. Tyus Bowser coming off an injury. Jalen Ferguson, uh, question marks there. So I just, I'm, I'm not sure that he's even going to be on the team. Um, so. I don't know, man. I don't know what happened with that. I don't know what happened with Jalen Ferguson. It's like this guy uh, leads leads college in sacks, leads the NCAA in sacks, and it's like, what happened? Did the Ravens just mess up on Jalen Ferguson, or what? 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 What happened there? Because I, 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 I initially usually when oh man, he he was terrible, he was this, he was that, but then I think like, hold up, man. Did the Ravens just slip up? Did they not? Play him to his full potential? Did they not put him in positions to succeed? I don't know, because it's, it's weird. You don't just go from balling out in, in college, and then you get to the pros, and it's like, oh, yikes. So, I don't know, man. It's just something to think about. But um, as far as uh, KT, um, yeah, I wouldn't be mad if the Ravens got him, because uh, it would be an immediate help uh, to an area where you've been lacking consistency uh, at for a while next question came from my guy cage he said hey engraven hope everything is well it's my first time sending in a question so i've been thinking recently since all of the free agents that left us recently only got small one-year deals this means that we most likely won't get any comp picks next year correct at first i was disappointed then it just hit me shout out to will smith uh, if we don't have any comp picks then what will stop us from signing big name free agents next year if we have no picks to lose just something to think about well actually this year that will be this year because with the comp pick formula is based off of um like any players that qualify for comp picks um like the, the way that it works uh say for instance bradley bozeman if he signed a big deal and it qualified the Ravens for like a third or fourth round comp pick. Uh, but if they sign somebody to a big deal like Marcus Williams, that signing will cancel out the comp pick that they would have gotten for Bradley Bozeman. But if they didn't sign a Marcus Williams and Bradley Bozeman got signed by somebody else to a big deal, then they would get the comp pick for Bradley Bozeman unless they signed somebody before the comp pick period ended. 
So the comp pick, the you get it next year, but it's all about what happens this year. It's all about what happens this off season. Um, and then next year's off season will impact the following year's comp picks. Um, so they uh they but bottom line they ain't getting none this year. <laughs> ain't, ain't none of those little small deals that these Ravens free agents got. None of them are qualifying for no comp pick. So w the only thing stopping the Ravens from signing a big free agent is the Ravens. My right, next question came from my guy Hoodie Cam. He said, "Hey, Graven, how's the fam? Uh, we should push for Debo or DK or even AJ Brown. Ooh, ooh, if, ooh, ooh! Like DK or AJ Brown, I would love either one. Debo don't know, not at all. Um, he said the Ravens need that trust, that number one guy, and I think Debo should come because he's a good fit. Uh, he did it all last season. Just imagine if we put Debo at running back, the Ravens would be a problem. But what you thinking, Graven? Nope. Uh." -uh. I, I'm I'm a no for Debo, not because he's not a good player, because he's a, he's a great phenomenal player. Um, difference maker on offense, but I just feel like if the Ravens would get him, Giro would overthink everything with him. He would overthink and overcomplicate everything. I would much rather a more uh, traditional wide receiver like a DK Metcalf, not a weapon guy like Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel with the right offensive coordinator, oh my goodness, amazing. But not Greg Roman, I just feel like he'll be trying to do too much. He already tries to do too much with Lamar Jackson, he, with, with, with De Devin DuVernay. They don't know what they're doing with him. That, that's all they do with him is jet sweeps. That's it. He's a jet sweep king. That's all they do with him. So that's why I would much rather... A, a traditional wide receiver, like you mentioned A.J. Brown, you mentioned D.K. Metcalf, I would much rather somebody like that rather than a guy who's a baller now. Again, Debo Samuel is nice, nice. But Ravens, and the off, they, they would just overcomplicate everything. Next question came from my guy Quentin. He said, hey, Graven, do you think the Ravens would draft a linebacker in the first round? If so, uh, who do you think would be best? I think Devin Lloyd, um, and he's somebody that can play literally everywhere. Every every linebacker spot, Mike, Sam, Will, everything. Um, do I think they would do it? It could be a sneaky pick, but I, I don't think they would. Um, yeah, I, I don't think they would. Uh, they have they got some options at linebacker now, and obviously with Josh Bynes, he's not the future. Uh, with Patrick Queen, I think the Ravens they they wanted him to be the future, but right now he's not their future. Well, he is technically in their future plans, but I don't think he's their long term answer for the future. Um, and this year, oh, this year is going to be big for him because after this season, then they'll have the option to pick up his fifth year. Ooh, so that's going to be something. So he, a lot of pressure on Patrick Queen, man. Um, you still got Malik Harrison there. Uh, so that's, that's somebody who could possibly step up to and get it. And, and Ravens, like, the thing with them, they'll give their linebackers a shot. They, they, it don't matter what round you was drafted in, even if you undrafted. If you show you can play, you will get a shot. Guarantee it. it. It never fails. And that's rounds one through seven. And if you wasn't even drafted, you can get a shot. You show out in training camp and preseason and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're going to find you a spot on the roster if you like that. So they, as far as the first round, I don't think it happens. Um, but I don't even think it needs to. Shout out to Graven.